Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up with my friend David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are here in um, Camas, Utah, and we we just went up to the monastery yesterday to visit everybody. And as always, I want this show to be a beacon of love, you know, really for myself and the whole world. So I want it to be a very present issue and a very present experience and yeah each week i've been honored to have that experience with david here and i was actually sharing with everybody at the monastery yesterday how grateful i am for that time we've been down here getting everybody ready in the new direction with regards to upgraded media equipment and websites and so it's been really beautiful but today i actually want to cover a few course quotes and some very specific topics with uh, Frank. We're gonna pull Frank in here in a few minutes as I see him get up from his couch there. (laughs) (laughs) But the section of the course that I'd like to start out with is from Beyond All Idols. And it says, idols are quite specific, but your will is universal. And so it has no form nor is content for its expression in the terms of form. That's always a powerful line for me because it's like you can't even express your love really in terms of form. Yeah, Christ is never content with form. It's always divine light and abstraction that brings fulfillment for Christ. So yeah, it's good for us to have that perspective (laughs) from beyond this world. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we're actually, the second, the first half is going to be around sickness and um, an identity, perhaps even sexual identity. And the sex, second half <laughs> is going to be around arranged marriages. So you can keep those topics in mind as we go through a couple lines here. Stay tuned. Frank, sexual identity and arranged marriage. You're not going to find this every day. <laughs> <laughs> idols are limits they are the belief that there are forms that will bring happiness and that by limiting is all attained it is if you have said i have no need of everything this little thing i want and it will be as everything to me and this must fail to satisfy because it is your will that everything be yours It is not form you seek. What form can be a substitute for God the Father's love? What form can take the place of all the love in the divinity of God the Son? What idol can make two of what is one? And can the limitless be limited? You do not want an idol. It is not your will to have one. It will not bestow on you the gift you seek. Here's the key line. When you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. So you see your will within the idol, thus reducing it to a specific form. So there's a couple more lines, but we'll get into that later. Some of the topics that are on the bottom or on the surface of the mind or we watched Mary Magdalene last night. What was it called Mary Magdalene or okay. it is called Mary Magdalene, which really was the, is the, the true story. <laughs> the true story a much more accurate interpretation of what happened to Mary Magdalene. At the end of the movie, they even put in there that a recent Pope or the Catholic church has since declared that in 519, they they called Mary Magdalene a prostitute as a way to subjugate the presence and maybe even subjugate women in a sense, but just to hide the true light of Christ. And this story actually showed the depth of the relationship that Mary had with Jesus and, and all the power that was in that to let the light shine. So. Yeah. Typical ego, two Marys. Hmm. Well, we have to emphasize just one. Let's push one down and emphasize Mother Mary. (laughs) 
meanwhile, the mystic gets pushed, kind of written out as a prostitute. But uh, but it was corrected, and and I think the way it relates to what you were reading, you know, oh, yeah. it's so powerful. When you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Mary Magdalene is just such a great symbol of she fell in love with the with the Christ presence. She fell in love with with that love that was radiating from eternity, and uh, she had to let go of her family and let go of everything of this world. I think, and to some extent, she almost really had to let go of being a woman. I saw Diana's post uh, there with uh, Mary Magdalene and Jesus uh, side by side right there. And and then that was a, such a beautiful picture because it seems they have what the world would call the male and the female. And then there's one mind. Marriage is union. So there's a union, a mind that's one with God. That is the reality. And then even the male and the female and the masculine and feminine, all those dualistic concepts have to fall away to know the I am presence. So it's beautiful. When you decide upon the form of what you want, Mary Magla had to have to overlook a crucifixion scene and she had to overlook uh, different ones, Judas and Peter and all these ones that were contending and thinking that Jesus had some kind of political mission. She had to overlook all of that. And then finally she stared at him while he was on the cross. She had to overlook the body and as the best she could, just go yeah. back into that love. Yeah. And then during the resurrection, there they are, and they, they smile at each other and they start laughing together. <laughs> wow, that's transcendence to go way beyond the body and go into the, the spirit, the love. It's powerful. And also they, throughout the episode, most of the men or half of the apostle men we're constantly thinking that Jesus was bringing a kingdom to earth, which is a classic when you decide upon the form of what you want. What do you want? A kingdom of this world. You want to be the right-hand man of Jesus, the sons of thunder, they call them. Forget if it's the Bible or your rancher book. Elevate the body, elevate the personalities, competition, strife. And there was this beautiful scene where they thought Jesus was going to unleash the kingdom and they were all going to be raised up to some kind of earthly prominence. And instead he, he made everything worse and overturned the, <laughs> the money table. Yeah, the, the money changers, yeah. He didn't make a good first impression there <laughs> when he first went into the temple. Almost like, no, nope, not this direction. Sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah. And the devastation on Judas's face when he realized that this was not going the way he wanted. And then still he made one last attempt to decide upon the form and forced Jesus' hand by meeting with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and then they killed him. So he had felt so guilty, he just yeah. killed himself. Yeah. I just, I feel such a sense of, um, of magnificence because, you know, watching Mary Magdala and watching that whole story again, and then, and then of course, we're shooting, we're, we're broadcasting from Utah. And of course, Utah is famous for the Mormons, and and you got to love their devotion. They've been hanging in there and following Jesus like Christians have tried for 2,000 years. But until the Christian or the sincere seeker gets clear, I'm looking, we got Jesus right here uh, below us. Until the sincere Christian really starts to understand content and, and understand that it's not about making a lot of money as a church. It's not about material abundance. It's not about reaching lost souls and how many can we crank, you know, how many hundreds or thousands or millions of lost souls have we saved, mm -hmm. have professed upon the name of Lord Jesus? No, it's everything. It's not about any of that. It's about this still presence that's within that's been so covered over by this world. And you have to have a willingness to leave behind the values of this world. You can't mix heaven and earth because when you go into heaven so deeply, you see a happy dream in which earth is completely transformed. But you can't bring God into this world. And I think that's, of course, it's not just Christianity. And uh, we love the Mormons, and we were even reading about one of their, their early communities and Order. all their Orderville and all their attempts to, to live the teachings of Jesus with equality, with uh, 
sharing everything, you know, not having individual yeah. preferences and salaries. And of course, uh, you know, they had men and women in their communities, you know, a lot of, of traditions, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, you know, they've, they've really segregated men like, okay, all the women, you stay over in that corner and the men, you stay over here and don't even come close. God forbid, you know, and when they do seem to come together, jealousies and all kinds of wild, yeah. crazy things. You know, the tango in Argentina, yeah. it, it, the dance grew out of yeah. this passion, but also there were so many murders <laughs> associated with tango through the years, <laughs> you know, of jeal murders of passion, of jealousy. It's just all ego stuff. And now we're coming into this beautiful, clear, transparent Christ presence that's just shining through and you I even have gratitude for all the attempts that were made and now here we go we're going into actual Christ presence that that really holds nothing valuable of this world mm. that's how you can be defenseless because you're not protecting mm. anything yeah we like that about their even their attempt in orderville they said that they were started from nothing they were death Deathly poor, super poor. And yet not in debt. And not in debt, which is great. And they just had their hard work and their labor and they built this town. And the way they lived was every year, whatever they accumulated surplus, they put into the communal pot. And whatever debts that they had or someone had towards them were forgiven. So every year they would restart as a communal yeah. community, which you could just feel the love. Yeah. Underneath the it. attempt. It's a, a beautiful attempt at, at perfect equality. We're all <laughs> in this together. Nobody's ahead. Nobody's behind. Nobody's more special. And can we not live and work and be together in harmony? I love it. Of course, we have A Course in Miracles guiding us, so that helps <laughs> when you get direct, uh, clear uh, instructions from yeah. Jesus, really, and that guidance. And, and of course, they used Joseph Smith, the, the, their mystic, their prophet, and, and they, were, they were doing the best they could with their inspirations at the time. And now I think with The Course of Miracles, where it's just so clear. It's so crystal clear that you really can't miss it. That's what you had a one-on-one -on -one with a gentleman at the monastery yesterday who said he's, his great-grandfather or grandfather was founded Orderville. Mm -hmm. And he's tried, lived at other monasteries, and he said, he was telling us a story that when he would go into the bathroom, he said, men and women aren't separated at your monastery. He said he was in there shaving, and one of the women walked in, and he thought, I'll try this no private thoughts thing, and said, should I shave or not shave his beard? And she said, you look perfect just the way you are. Whatever you do is going to be amazing. He's like, I'm in this place. <laughs> Yeah, because he went, I think, to maybe a Catholic monastery and a Buddhist monastery before he came to our monastery. And he's like, whoa, I'm hearing conversations that I've never heard before. I don't think I've, I've ever heard them on the planet before, these conversations. But, yeah. but again, it's just the love and the desire. He was like a breath of fresh air, so yeah. open, so open-minded like a sponge, taking it all in. And yeah, we love that. We love that attitude. Yeah. Yeah, well, I um, I had a little miracle yesterday because Jeffrey called me up. I had no idea what the show was going to be about. And he said, I think Frank, you should call Frank. He's got something for you. And I thought, okay, well, let's see how that goes. And I went to go see if I could meet anybody at the monastery before I called Frank. But I went to look at my phone and my phone, the Apple Maps, which I never use, just opened up on my phone and zoomed into France on its own and I was like whoa and I thought oh Frank is in France <laughs> so I, that's a pretty strong sign so call Frank now <laughs> so I called Frank up I thought okay and we had a beautiful talk I I don't know if you want to start out Frank or maybe I set up a little context but Frank has had uh, has had hip issues for five years and he's always thought it had something to do with a muscle or maybe a deep guilt with him losing his son and he's just been open to, to finding out, you know, the true cause, so to speak, of this. And just recently, he, yeah, maybe you can take it over from here. You, you met some doctors and you had three witnesses. Do you want to share? Yeah, I, I, um, I had three witnesses. And, you know, I'm always, you know, David, 
always says, you know, make it obvious. So um, I, you know, this guy tells me that it could be coming from my prostate because I had a, I had an issue there and we thought it was cancer. And, you know, I took a bit, an alternative route with him and I was treated pretty uh, seriously by him. And uh, I didn't want to, you know, and it seems to be just an inform. We don't know exactly what it is because I didn't want anybody to poke around. Um, but, um, but anyway, so, so he said that and then, and then I had a massage the other day and the guy said, you know, you went to the bathroom twice <laughs> during the massage. Maybe you have the, the, you know, should look at your process. Said, yeah, I, I've been having a problem. So I thought, you know, that made it obvious that these two, two people, and then I saw another guy in Zurich uh, last month and he also said it could be coming from an organ. Now the thing with the prostate is that, you know, I mean, it brings up a huge issue that if I have that operated, there's a, there's a, 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 a you know, a 20% chance that, uh, you know, nerves get damaged and then the sexuality, you know, this, the sex, uh, you know, so, so that's, uh, for the longest time, I, I tried to suppress that because I didn't even want to, um, I didn't even want to, 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 you know, to think about that. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, this show, and then we talked yesterday in Calico, you know, the bit she did. Um, it just, uh, you know, exposed everything, you know, and the attachment that I have to uh, sexuality and even, you know, my, my, all of the identities I've had. And I had a pretty rock and roll life, you know, with the drugs and all that, and sex was a big part of it. And, you know, and it's part of my identity. And, uh, you know, once I tried to, tried to explain it to Lisa and she, she, she said, oh, yeah, you were a lover boy, you know. And so that's, that was kind of an identity that, you know, <laughs> to this day, I, 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 I carried with me, you know, the, the horse whisper, you know, it's like this whole thing. And now all this stuff is falling away. I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm going to lose my sexuality, but there's a risk there, you know. So, um so, so uh, anyway, uh, you know, I'm really exposed, you know, I, I'm, I, and then, you know, I taught when I spoke to, uh, to Jeffrey, he said, well, we could talk about it at the, on the show. I said, whoa, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> you <know? laughs> but, you know, I'm willing, and this is always, and I'm most grateful. I said, okay, you know, so, um, so it just happened that 20 minutes later, I talked to you, Jason, and then. We said, let's, let's bring it up at the show. But, you know, what I have to expose is, you know, the, the, the identity. Um, and, and this show has taken me very deep because even with, uh, you know, with uh, what, what was just said, uh, what you just said, and then what Calico said about sexuality. And, and then in the meantime, um, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm totally exposed. It's something that to me, you know, losing my sexuality, suicide would be a much bigger option. You know, now I'm here on, uh, online talking about it. And sometimes, you know, I realize sometimes uh, those, so some of these, um, uh, um, you know, some of our shows, when they go on YouTube, they get 10,000 hits, you know. And uh, so <laughs> here I'm exposing it. It's a big deal for me. I just want you guys to know, you know. And so, um, anyway, yeah, it's 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 scary. And as the show went on, I realized, you know, how the impermanence of everything. And here's a lifetime of attachment to something. And here I'm in the south of France, you know, where there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know a lot of egos walking around and sexuality is, you know, and I just see it and, and uh, yeah, and everything is just poof, you know. Uh, oof, it's a very vulnerable position to be in and to talk about it. So you were, you were saying that to um, <laughs> me on the phone yesterday, you, you wouldn't do the operation before mystery school, which you're coming to, but something yeah. considering and, and would it even be helpful Right. Let go of this hip pain, which is killing you. But then you're going to have to face this thought of who will I be if I can never, if I become impotent? Right. And then, like, will I have my, my partner? 
you know, and what's worse, the hip pain or, or becoming impotent and losing, uh, impotent and losing my partner. So when you were talking, I could just, yeah, because a lot of you know I had that surgery and everything's com completed surgery wise, but I won't know for a while still if it's successful. But I noticed when Frank was talking, I could really feel the resonance with that idea that underneath that might disappear, that whole identity. And it was like, whoa, I could, I didn't really know that was underneath. It may be over. And so I just thought from the bottom up, that would be a, a good topic and see how it fits into when you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose because they seem so yeah. far away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does seem like, like Mary Magla had a quick decision to make, like uh, her dad and family was trying to marry her off to be a wife, to uh, be a daughter, and to assume all the traditional uh, roles. And then, Frank, you're sharing here 2,000 years later, you know, the lifestyle you've had and, and so so on and so forth. And, and um, it, it's... It really is a let go, no matter which angle you come from it. But it's not like it's a real uh, letting go or is a sacrifice because uh, we were created as light. And then part of the ego uh, covering of that light is to make up all these roles. And a lot of them we pursue because they bring us pleasure and we avoid certain roles because they bring us pain. But I see with Mary Magdala, she was just basically feeling like, oh, my God, this is my call to eternity. And I can't deny the call. So she had to very quickly, even with a hostile brother and a father who was kind of people pleasing and, and a family that was trying to cling her, cling to her and a sister who was saying, what are you doing? You can't do this. You'll bring shame on our family. She was even having those thoughts. I'll bring shame to my family if I follow Jesus, basically. And we have to face those things, and we need this metaphysical context to start to understand that we are only going to be our natural selves and know true love in a sense of, of light uh, that is not of this world, that the five senses are, are keeping us distracted. And Frank called them attachments. You know, those attachments, we're aware of them. And then the mind will even try to manage the attachments, like juggle the attachments. If I could trade a, a hip pain, and, but I don't want to lose my sexuality, you know, it's almost like a, the ego is like really bargaining there to try to, to manage the pains or manage the attachments. Uh, like, what can I get away with? And in the end, the spirit's like saying, it's no sacrifice at all to let go of illusions. It can't be a sacrifice, but you believe they're real. Mm. So therefore, you feel tremendous terror mm. at letting them go. And thank God we have a function. You know, you have a function. I have a function. Frank has a function. We all have a function to, as miracle workers, you know, to gain confidence in this new direction. Because without this confidence in the new direction, who would want to let those things go? Mm. And so I feel like that's part of the operation you had. And now just watching to see how things go, you know, you're looking at almost like it's a diamond and you're just looking at all the different facets and, and honestly saying, you know, do, do any of these facets that sparkle have, have a, a, an attraction for me? And, and are these facets of the diamond still holding me back from, from fully releasing to the light so like i can understand how if you're working functionally and you're having sex and it's pleasurable or whatever that that's a diamond but my experience is it's not a diamond but metaphysically i understand it must be but how how can i look at this because it's pain because yeah well, that's i want to drop that like a hot potato, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah, they seem very different, pleasure and pain, but I think as, as I have found as I've gone deeper into my function of just as, as a communication function, those draws and attractions, whether it seems to be around food or sexuality or climate or different types of sensations and so forth, you know, those things can be used by the spirit 
to unwind from the attachment to them. And so that's why guidance is so important. Like it's not about trying to take a stand behaviorally to do this or do that, because that just gets into indulgence and repression, but to actually let things be under Christ's control. And we were talking in our interview yesterday, I think you're going to show a part of it about do not raise body thoughts to the level of mind. People often say, what does that even mean? And I say, well, that just means that if you have body thoughts and you raise them to the level of mind, you raise them to the level of causation, and then you take responsibility for those thoughts, and then you feel guilty because God didn't create the body. And when you take responsibility for body thoughts, then you're, a, you're taking on a, 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 a causation and a responsibility that, that doesn't really exist. So you have the illusion of pain and suffering. Mm. But when you give those over to Christ mm. for guidance or the or the Spirit, mm. then the Spirit will use those just to unwind. Mm. So, for example, like with Frank, what, what you were sharing, isn't it isn't it more positive to think of the spirits in charge? And I'm going to give this thing that's been uh, maybe it's been an identity, but this involves some pain and some struggle uh, with this identity. I'm going to give that over to the Spirit to use my current perceived identity to help myself and everyone in the universe loosen from this ego. Mm. And, and in that sense, it's a glorious use. There's no push away. You don't get angry at the body. You don't try to say, you know, you're, you're, you're not worthy. Uh, you, you basically say, I give this all over to you, Jesus, to use to unwind my mind and take me back into that state of mind that's pure spirit it's very natural one of the things frank said yesterday was that something like you can correct me if i'm wrong frank but god is is doing this to me because it no longer serves and lisa said to him lisa fair said oh god would never do that to you and we both resonate that god wouldn't do that mm -hmm. with you but there's also something that's true in it, that if something's holding you back, like, for example, the hip thing with Frank, he was grateful in a way that he let go of the horses because he found us and he really is getting into his calling. But he never would have done it if he could have kept riding horses. Yeah. So it's, he's kind of like, do I have to learn through pain and, and let, you know, so it's, yeah. it's got a nuance there. Right? Yeah, I think... You know, it's nice when we can see things start to fade away. And sometimes the plan calls for things to kind of fade and disappear. And other times the plan calls for things to happen to us uh, in which things seem to disappear. So sometimes it seems like a voluntary choice. And other times it seems like, well, that got ripped away or that got taken away. And things can start to disappear through circumstances that seem to be in the world. But those are just two forms mm. uh, that really are ultimately the same when it's all, mm. you see it's all mind. Mm. It's just that when you no longer need something, it starts to fall away. As you come more toward the light, you can, you, the mind does let go of things. Does that mean I don't need sexuality anymore? If it goes? Oh, you're having so much fun in this show that you never know, you could, be like Oprah, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're in a healing function, look at Oprah. I mean, she was like, she had issues with weight. She had issues with, I mean, all kinds of things. And she just decided to to do like a no private thoughts, no people pleasing uh, television show, and it went on season after season, and seemed to help millions upon millions of people just because. She was going to use the show for her own healing. Mm -hmm. She was going to call on the people that she needed to talk to. She was going to say the things she needed to say. You know, it, it relates to what Diana was just talking about. You know, when you show up and you're willing to expose and call upon and invite the Holy Spirit and, and, and uh, Jeffrey's show, you know, Jeffrey and Frank, everybody loves it, how they just expose, expose. Kristen was saying she even had a pop through there just watching those two inspired her during the break to pop through a, a, something that came up for her you know where we inspire each other <laughs> we're, we're like look at them look at them go look at this look at this exactly. we've, we've seen so many people who come close to us and then they do take off like 
like uh, Calico was saying, like a rocket. Uh, they just rocket up from, like Lisa did, and my friend Cindy and Calico, you know, they rocket up from really dark things that seem to be just the weight of the world into a joyful function. Mm -hmm. We end up seeing them laughing, Calico laughing, Cindy laughing, Frank laughing, you laughing, me laughing. And in the end, Mary Magdalene and Jesus, after all of what happened, they, and he, it's a resurrected Jesus. And then first, Joaquin Phoenix smiles and, and there's Mary, and she, then she smiles back. And then they both start chuckling. I mean, after, after the whole crucifixion scene, it was a bloody mess from the world's perspective. And yet it was, ha <laughs> well, now who has the last laugh? And that's the way it goes with spiritual awakening. When you get more aware of the love, the light that you really are, you come into the world will end in laughter. The world will not end in Armageddon. The world will not end in, in pain and suffering. The world will end in laughter. Of course, there's something inside of us that, that loves that because it knows that it's true. It knows that that's exactly how the world will end and, and how great that we can walk together and and go through these things together. It's funny you answered with the Oprah thing because I, I was thinking about the timing of this that I had even the surgery like July fifth, and then beautiful time with Jeffrey and Susanna and family in San Francisco. And then right when I could get out of the wheelchair, basically the Tuesday after, I was over here in Camas and we were like nonstop for three weeks. You know, midnight six in the morning, the busiest I've been in. In years and i thought about it i really didn't think of anything for like two weeks <laughs> your rehabilitation <laughs> was to keep your mind up in purpose yeah and not anything. in your crotch yeah. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> <laughs> this is live tv <laughs> we need a beeper <laughs> beep. <laughs> okay moving on <laughs> No, we're going on to arranged marriage. I tell you, this your shows are just, I love what you cover. <laughs> now next on our show, we have arranged marriage. <laughs> How does that fit in? Okay, we're all fascinated to hear. This is what I, this is what I hope the show reveals. <laughs> I never know until we start how it all comes together. Every other show has to have their materials ready by Wednesday. I'm sending them links on sun, sun, Saturday morning. <laughs> What's today? Sunday. Sunday. Okay, well, yesterday we were up at the monastery and a lot of the people that have come in um, are really just kind of freed themselves from their inhibitions and in terms of their thoughts and just feel so happy that they don't have to repress what they're thinking. And with that has come a feeling of like, whoa, attractions and repulsions. And so one of the ladies up there that you're going to see in the interview, Linda, uh, has made it here and basically shared that she's had an attraction to somebody in our community. And in the big gathering, David just gave her a, I was, I was watching, just a beautiful response around the idea that the script is written and, and you really can't control it. And it was a very simple answer that the mind could just rest in. So I thought, let's just have a little interview with that. And he also mentioned maybe the topic of the show today could be, or one day, arranged marriages. So I'm trusting that this topic Frank and I just went in, and what you're about to see all ties together to just keep the mind going higher and higher and letting go of control. So unless you have any thoughts, I might just play the interview. Yeah, of course, when I say arranged marriage, you know, oh, yeah. every, if the script is written, <laughs> that means everything's arranged. It's, it's, your divorces are arranged, your marriages are arranged, your children are arranged, you know, that, that the mind, these things are pre-decided upon before you seem to enter in and play them out. Because the mind is, is where the beliefs are. You have to believe in these things before they can even seem to manifest. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, there's been people who talk about contracts, but it's a broader top topic, even though we have Tarana and, and tell, bringing the Indian perspective of arranged marriage basically between families. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I use a broader uh, context for that. Yeah, arranged. And it wasn't even about marriages. It was just letting go of the idea that you have to pick or choose. You can relax. You can relax. Letting the Holy Spirit orchestrate everything. Yeah. 
So here we've got a 15 minute interview. We'll play and then come back on and keep going. Welcome to this pre recorded segment of From the Bottom Up <laughs> with my guest David Hoffmeister and Linda. Okay, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. You probably know your guest <laughs> names before you go on camera. But uh, we just had a beautiful gathering here at the monastery today talking about uh, relationships and healing and ego's use of relationships, but mostly the Holy Spirit's use of relationships. And we got into this idea of prearranged marriages because Linda was expressing some concern thoughts around these attractions to different members of our community. Just one. <laughs> just one. You know, just one. It's just one. <laughs> Let's be clear. Let's get the record straight. Yeah. <laughs> but you were wondering how, what to do with all that. And Kirsten mm -hmm. had a talk with you here about lighting with function and purpose. But, but David's answer was, was deeper mm -hmm. in terms of helping you relax and be unconcerned. Did you, yeah. you want to share a little bit about your experience of that? Um, well, yeah, since I have all these feelings coming up, like attraction, love, and I was wondering, what do I do with it? I'm like, I'm here now, I'm within the community for a period of time, and and just allowing these feelings, that was like a struggle for me in the beginning. And then Kirsten gave this talk about, you can just, you can allow it because, you know, it's it's not given, it's not gonna happen. You don't have to do anything with it. So, and I felt this safe space, like, okay, so I can allow these feelings. And it's so different than in the world because I thought I would act, I would have to act on it, but. I don't have to do it here. And then David said, just, you can just relax. The script is written and yeah. So yeah. it's a deeper feeling of, I really don't have to know anything really. But even with these feelings, I don't have to do anything with it. And that's a true gift for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the first time that I can allow these mm. feelings of love and really, mm be intimate like just yeah and just feeling it and yeah like a destiny feeling so i think tarana was when she piped up and started talking about arranged marriages and this is my culture and this is what i grew up in and but it was still from that sense of purpose like there was a a deeper purpose to everything and, and relaxing into an acceptance that uh seems to be lacking in for many cultures and traditions where it's it's more like shopping for a partner is like going to the grocery store and checking out everything checking out the merchandise very strange as if people are like products and marriages are products and you've got to do all your exploration ex you know it's very different from this idea of arranged marriages this idea of destiny mm -hmm. But I feel like that that requires a lot of trust, but there's a huge benefit when you do have that trust because you're not you're you're paying attention more and more to the guidance, like what's helpful here and going in deeper and and you know sometimes people call, call it fate and you know that's another way of talking about it and sometimes people say, I don't like that I'm not in control of anything but but it's nice to know our, we do have control of our state of mind and uh, it's based on which thoughts we choose to hold on to. So, you know, really there's a beautiful answer from Jesus for everything. Everything that's a doubt or a concern, you know, gets brought up to the light and then, you know, there's a peace that comes with that and acceptance. So it's a beautiful topic today. Yeah, and I feel like staying aligned with that one purpose because that's what I want. That mm -hmm. was that was my deepest prayer coming here. Like I want to stay with Christ. I want to stay with Christ. And then these special feelings for a person mm -hmm. are coming up. So that it seems to be that there's a conflict, but mm. it's not there if I can allow it. And mm. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking that 
arranged marriages are actually better because if you choose, you choose, like, you know, you've seen that, uh, what the bleep in the rabbit hole, and you can't choosing the same partners because you want to play out the same core beliefs, usually, I guess, negative, if that's the right word, patterns that play out. But when you give it over, you're giving it over to the spirit to undo the pattern as opposed to keep it going. Because you have no choice but to pick from your past conditioning. What I like, what I don't like. So... Yeah. And then it goes into that thing of what do I have like voluntary control over and what's involuntary, which is a, a great deep rabbit hole to go into when once, especially since we're hearing that miracles are involuntary and we're desiring miracles, then it's like, hmm. And then ultimately, what if, if everything's a miracle and the fear was never really there and what if it all was involuntary and there was no conscious control or figuring out of any of it you know which is an ultimate release and let go so i do feel like that in spiritual community and with relationships you really get a chance to to really take a close look at do i believe this or do i still feel i have control and and how much control and all those kind of things you really get to look at in a very honest way. Because you've been, that's pretty much every week on your show, you know, looking at the different issues from different perspectives, but it seems like we always seem to pop through into a, like a surrender or a release point. You know, whether it's around surgery or partners or, you know, so many things <coughs> in the world where there's a, it's a high stress level to try to figure it out and should I be controlling more or less or do I have any control? Yeah, it's very profound. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and then I shared like last night I had this insight, I really don't know what a relationship mm. is. Yeah. And even that is so helpful to to let go because mm. I don't know. I would I would go into my past learning to go into a new relationship but I don't want that anymore because it's well it doesn't give me anything <laughs> really yeah yeah that's a big one I don't know with with regard to relationships yeah that's huge to even move in that direction is absolutely that is huge. huge yeah wow yeah I mean yeah yeah, even when we meet out here right now, you know, today, mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, we meet. What do we do? Do we sit? Do we talk? Do we say hi? Do we hug? It's just feeling into it. What What do you want from me? What do you want from yeah. me? Every time, I don't want to hold on to my own. I need, I want. I can see those things coming up, like I need or I want, and then giving it over, and then just, okay, show me, show me. Mm -hmm. There's <laughs> yeah. a lot of witnesses, too. Richard had a beautiful... <laughs> sharing too about this kind of observing and watching and and paying attention to his feelings. Yeah, yeah. that's it's yeah. a good example. Mm. It's quite quite deep. Yeah, he didn't want to get lost in any body thoughts, relationships, or anything. He just wanted to experience the true relationship. And Tarana's maybe on the live part of the show, but. Unless she's going to come in right now. Yeah, you can come. You can just sit right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Hey, you were sharing this beautiful <laughs> parable of a movie you watched where in India they, yeah. they have arranged marriages a lot and 12 people help you decide so you have the best life possible. Well, it really... Yeah, I thought it never occurred to me that arranged marriages have a parallel in A Course in Miracles until I heard Kirsten say today that in the community, whenever you have, there is a special relationship, it becomes a holy relationship because there are 12 people in the community involved in it. And that, a penny dropped for me, uh, you know, all my life we have taken it for granted. Arranged marriages is the way of life in India. 
and it's a given every second marriage is an arranged marriage even the love marriages cannot happen unless and until the families come into agreement and then the love marriage like my marriage of course i'm single now but the, my marriage was you know boy met girl the gentleman he liked me he wanted he 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 said this is love but we had to bring our families into it so our marriage was a love marriage which got converted into an arranged marriage remember one time kirsten had all this attraction to somebody else and you mm -hmm. just well call you know and she, she called him up and just it was dead but the ego oh. takes these past relationships and mm -hmm. i heard a concept one time halo you put a halo around your widow or you put your halo around the past and it isn't what it's so just to have that full permission like to honor people's decisions and then that is what love is and then they come back so to speak it was actually more than calling it was um why don't you go visit him and let's i'll help you look for a plane ticket yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> so there's a lot of allowance there <laughs> yeah. with that too yeah and then with all that permission and allowance then it was like huh well i i don't really know if I want to do that. <laughs> so that was good. There's a great uh, line in the Course, which, which is mysterious for people who study it, but it's, do not raise body thoughts to the level of mind. And what he's saying and meaning by that is don't, don't raise them to the level of mind, because when you do that, level of mind is causation. So as you raise body thoughts to the level of mind, you take them on as if you cause hurt people's feelings, ruin things, and all those different kind of things that come from taking, raising body thoughts to the level of mind. Mm -hmm. And he said, and then you aren't giving them to me to be under Christ's control. So it's really the guidance is still comes back to the guidance that, that as long as you take personal ownership and responsibility, of these thoughts, they're going to be guilt. And when you give it over and say, Holy Spirit, decide for God for me, you lead the way, you guide me, you show me the way, there's a lightness that comes with that surrender. Trying to grab control of the thoughts and thinking you're responsible brings guilt. Letting them go, you lead the way, those guidances are a part of the unwinding from the ego and so of course they are the, the release of guilt mm -hmm. instead of the maintaining of it so mm -hmm. it's really pretty simple when you look at it metaphysically then yeah it gets simpler and simpler like oh okay what's guided is provided and mm -hmm. once you try to do autonomously you know making decisions by yourself egoically then that that is not guided, and uh, and uh, there's a lot of intense emotions mm -hmm. that come with that. The guilt when you're somewhere you know you're choosing, that's what keeps the guilt alive. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite lines in the course, he said, he said, you think it's insulting when you give over choosing to me to follow guidance, but it's actually your way out of guilt because you no longer are responsible for the choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so like, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? You know, I mean, that's really cutting down to the, the core of it all. Yeah. On a moment by moment basis, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? That's yeah, yeah. very profound. Like for me, it came down to what will bring a blessing to everyone. That's ultimately the, the motive. And when you just are thinking in terms of just interpersonal relationships and you start down that road of what will this bring me and will I be better with this or not, it's very like tiny. And then uh, I know when I said yes to, okay, use me any way uh, that you want to, then there was a lot of travels, a lot of speaking, and occasionally there would be translators sent in, travel companions, you know, there were things that anything that helped enhance the experience for everyone and uh, it could be just the the joy and the fellowship of of two companions traveling together did you see that Ex sharing experiences together that lifts your spirits
-hmm. It could be, in, in the case of the translators, it's even more obvious, you know, me showing up in countries where I don't speak the language and then having a translator show up and then our collaboration, you know, brings smiling faces, nodding heads, like in South America, claro, claro, you know, lots of, of uh, witnesses of, wow, this is spectacular, this is great. It needed that collaboration. Mm -hmm. You could still show up in joy, and they, they a smile on left or, you know, people can feel it beyond the words, but that extra bit of those translations, you know, was like, made it all just spectacular, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to really, I didn't ever try to arrange those translators. It would be mm -hmm. showing up, or the organizer would bring one in, or this or that. You know, it was, again, a sense of just following and being grateful for what showed up. It wasn't a sense of trying to control this mm -hmm. thing by having a particular translator. I never mm -hmm. had any of those choices. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For this tiny segment of <laughs> another <laughs> episode. segment, another episode of From the Bottom Up. From the Bottom Up. Thank you. <laughs> and we continue here, mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a rich topic yesterday. I could feel the presence around. The idea of relationships and giving full permission and then when it all came up just to be able to relax into that idea that the script is written and it's all destined it's really beautiful yeah i think probably like athletes and musicians and artists you know if anybody's learned to paint or learned to play sports or um learned to play an, an instrument or even learning to ride a bike. Remember the first time when you were learning to ride a bike, how, you know, you needed assistance and, and whoever was there with you, you was saying, now pedal and balance, try to balance yourself. And they would give you hints and steps. And then there comes a point when you actually are riding the bike, where it's very much like you're being done through, like you're not thinking pedal balance. When you're riding that bike, it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is what it feels like to ride a bike or an athlete who's who's done so much training and played the sport over and over and over they can become more intuitive and i really use that in my life i use golf i use tennis i use basketball baseball the sports that i really loved and played i learned to just come inward and let the spirit come through me on the tennis court or on the basketball court and Artists do that as well, where they just get so into the moment mm -hmm. that they're not painting, they don't even think of mechanics anymore, and they don't think of how much will this painting bring if I sell it. You know, when they're in that moment of full joy and creativity, uh, then everything is spectacular. And you can do this with relationships. You can actually do this in your relationships. You can give your relationships so over to the Holy Spirit and you can say, I've had enough trouble and heartache trying to relate as a person to another person. It's, it's hard. I want you, Holy Spirit, relate through me. Use this relationship fully for your purposes. And when you do that, everything gets so soft and everything gets so easy. And it's so smooth and it's so joyful and you're not in control of any of it. You don't have control of any of it, but you love it. You love the experience of that joy and that connection. And you don't take things personally. Some Somebody could say or do something and you, you end up just shrugging or laughing a lot because you you aren't personally taking responsibility for that relationship. So it's whether it's a, a, a surgery, a sickness, or whether it's actually a relationship that you're troubled by, it, you can give that relationship so fully over to the Holy Spirit that you feel the ease coming in. Like, oh, it, I was never in charge of this. I don't have an outcome for this. I just want present peace. I want present happiness. 
and I'm not interested in the outcomes of the form. I'm not interested in how long this relationship will be when I'm, I'm here right now and I'm, I'm going to enjoy this instant. And think how relaxing that would be, even if the relationship seems to come to an end in form, somebody dies, somebody leaves or moves, moves to another country or another state, it, it still won't bother you because you're still in that place of it's all here for you to serve your purposes, God. When you're in that place of surrender, I think that's what Linda was experiencing yesterday when she was on our show. She just was sparkling and laughing and so happy because she started to relax into, I'm not in charge. I don't even have to figure out relationship and I don't have to figure out to make the right moves. I can be guided by the spirit moment by moment. And it's so freeing and it's so relaxing. That's, that's really what I felt. That's the kind of arrangement. If you wanted to have a, a, an arranged marriage, make an arrangement with the Holy Spirit to live in the moment and let go of the regrets of the past and the worries and concerns of the future. Now that's an arranged marriage because that's an arranged union. You're making a pact with the Holy Spirit to stay present with the Holy Spirit. And, and that kind of an arranged marriage, so to speak, will really lift you High, high, high. This is the one I'm attracted to most. Like when I was listening to everybody yesterday, I could feel yeah. the beauty of it all. But when Richard spoke about not going in to the healing touch session because he wanted to find the space in himself, that was what really attracted me and pulled me in. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to push anything away, but somehow I just want to give my whole heart to this, like just this yeah. experience and. Yeah. Well, you know, it's we have a way shower. You know, Jesus was friendly. He was kind. He he was like when he was present with you, it felt like the whole universe was there because he 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 had your attention mm -hmm. and the love could pour through mm -hmm. that connection and that intention. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, people try to write books, you know, Dan Brown and try to make things up about Mary Magdala and about Jesus, but that was a, a really a holy communion experience. That was a deep love that transcended the body and transcended male and female. Mm -hmm. That was a divine connection, a, a great symbol of that. And, and it's good. We do need uh, reminders of that. You know, even this movie, when it first was released, was down in Mexico with us in Europe, but it wasn't even released in the United States. But I thought, yeah, this is a movie that it, that is a reminder of, of a holy relationship and the, the desire to go into the holiness mm. where you never hold anything against a brother. Mm. Wouldn't that be fun to have a relationship where nobody ever held anything against you? You know, no matter what you were going through, they would just comfort you, hold you, bless you, but they would never try to contradict you, talk down to you, advise you and give you endless amounts of advice. Well, I would do this and I would, mm -hmm. if they just were just present and loving mm -hmm. and respectful of your being, you know, that's, and that's exactly what comes when you give it over to the Holy Spirit. You, you start to see everyone in that same state of respectfulness, you know, and, and honor. And that's, that's what everybody felt from Jesus. And that's why, Jesus is a, is a very good way shower because people felt honored in his presence. Mm -hmm. And they, he was friendly too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't some kind of, you know, you got to stand back from it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's very welcoming. The word kindness, you said it yesterday and then today again, it's standing out to me because somehow it seems more important right now. Like, because even, you know, you can be free with your words and not hold back on your thoughts, but if you don't have that aspect of kindness, even that, because I was saying something with Zach and Peter last night, and they I, you didn't see it in the video, the interview, but they had the boom mic right in front of <laughs> David's face. <laughs> and so we got back, and they had forgotten to turn the sound on. So <laughs> Minor details. Minor details. <laughs> Minor details for the sound team. <laughs> <laughs> it was Susanna's team without her up there. She gave us stories. 
so we came back. I didn't notice any of this really until we got back. And, and I said just a comment like, well, Peter's here, you know, he can, you know, if they, if they, they can do that one more time or whatever. And then if not, Peter can say something. And I made a movement like this. I was really